Want to know the latest and hottest music hidden in the airwaves? Don't be left out. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast. Pop, rock, hip hop, and the top 40. And we'll throw in news of your favorite artists, concert and tour dates, and so much more. Listen no further because this is the gold standard in music podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Music Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by AdamandEve.com, where for a limited time only, you'll get 50% off of just about any item on their website. When you type in the promo code GSMC at checkout, that is GSMC, just like the, just like the podcast, GSMC Music Podcast. The promo code is GSMC. Again, welcome to this podcast, this episode of the podcast. I am your host, Sarah. And today I want to talk about Kelly Clarkson's new album, The Meaning of Life. Before I go into that, full disclosure, I love Kelly Clarkson. I um, have loved her for a, a very long time. I've never really watched American Idol, and that's nothing against American Idol. It's just not a show I ever got into. So I wasn't I can't say that I've been a fan from hers from the very, very beginning. She was the uh, very first winner of American Idol, the season one winner of American Idol, and I did not watch American Idol then, or, well, I didn't watch any of the seasons of American Idol. I've seen bits and pieces, but... Again, that's nothing against American Idol. It's just not something I ever watched. So when she first came out, I didn't you know, I didn't have that that relationship with her that many people who had watched the season had with her and, you know, watched her win. But I very quickly came to enjoy her music. This is her eighth studio album. So I've, you know, we've had we've had seven before this to get us either in love with Kelly Clarkson or in like with Kelly Clarkson or Mia yeah, with Kelly Clarkson, depending on where you are. As I said, this is her eighth studio album, but it is a new, st- it is a studio album on a new label. So I follow her on some social media and I remember hearing her speak about making this change to the new label, which is Atlantic Records. And she was excited about it because she felt like she had outgrown the old label a little bit that she wanted to explore more than just pop music, which is where she had been with the old label. And so, you know, obviously I don't know her. I'm not going to speak to whether she was, you know, not whether it ended well, whether it ended amicably, you know, it's not really the point. The point is, is that she felt like she wanted to do things more uh, in a different direction creatively. And so she did sign with Atlantic Records. So she has described this album as being um, what a young Aretha Franklin might have done in 1967, if 1967 was 2017, if that makes any sense. So really, she's inspired by Aretha Franklin, and this album moves more from the pop genre into that realm of soul, and you can really hear that on this album. It is... um, I enjoyed it a lot. I have listened to it multiple times, and... um, haven't... You know, sometimes when I listen to a, a new album for the first time, I'm... I don't immediately love it. Like it'll take a couple of listenings for me. And that's just me. That's just how I listen to things sometimes. Like because it's new and it's unfamiliar, I'm like, "Mm, I don't know what I think about this yet. And then the more I listen to it, the more I start to like it. But this album, uh, The Meaning of Life, has just pretty much sucked me in from the beginning. I liked all of it. There isn't any song that I dislike completely. Um, So this, I really enjoyed this album. It is a, let's see, 14 track album. Those tracks are a minute, which is the intro, and it is, it's a minute and eight seconds. Can the literal part of me just say, oh, come on, if you're going to call a song a minute, can it really be just exactly 60 seconds? That's just me, and that has absolutely nothing to do with anything, but sometimes I like to be literal, okay? So, track one, a minute, and then Love So Soft, which is our first single. You've probably heard that. Heat, Meaning of Life, Move You, Whole lot of Woman, Medicine, Cruel, Didn't Die, Would You Call That Love, I Don't Think About You, Slow Dance, Don't You Pretend, and Go High. 
So again, this album is uh, moving away from that more pop sound and into a more, more soulful experience. I did read one review as I was preparing for this episode that um, didn't really appreciate this move very much. They the the reviewer was saying that they appreciated where she was trying to go with this new soulful sound, but that um, the vocals are such that the you, you can hear the vocals and the vocals are great but that they didn't feel like you could really hear the music underneath. And she feels, or she, I don't know if it was a she, the reviewer felt that um, if this had been a soul album from Atlantic Records, you know, back in the day, that you would have been able to hear, that you would have felt like there was actually a band playing in the background. And she said that the um, the instrumentals get a little bit lost, that the modern sound of this takes over. And I don't know. I don't, I didn't have that problem. Like I felt like this was exactly what Kelly had said it was, that she wanted to use Aretha Franklin for her inspiration, but she wanted it with a modern twist. She wanted it to be as if Aretha maybe were making an album in 2017. And so I felt like those updated instrumentals or the um, more modern notes in the songs weren't detracting for me. Of course, everyone has a different opinion and that really is up to, you know, up to each individual listener. I felt like those modern twists were appropriate because we don't want to necessarily just make an album that sounds like it came from 1967, although that is one option and could be fun, but you want it to sound also like it is from 2017. And so I think this album really walks that line very well. It's got those retro um, feelings to it. It's got uh, very soulful songs on it. There's nothing to complain about with Kelly's voice. She has one of the most powerful voices. She's got a very diverse voice. There, I'm always amazed by Kelly Clarkson. This is a quick side note because occasionally... I will hear a song and it will take me a while to realize that it's Kelly Clarkson. Like her range and her diversity is just so impressive to me that sometimes it almost doesn't sound like what I'm used to hearing her sound like. And that to me is a good thing. So for me, I didn't have a problem with what this, um, this reviewer was saying. And I also feel like there are some nods to country in this album as well, country music. And this might sound crazy or it might sound true. Again, you know, I don't have a, a lot of musical background. So when I'm saying things, don't smack me because I sound like an idiot. Um, but it, it sounded, you know, country and soul sometimes have some similar sounds. Obviously, they're not the same thing, but I feel like... You know, Kelly's got one of those voices that also works well with country music, and this is not in any way, shape, or form a country album, but you can kind of hear little bits and pieces of that, and I think that is, you know, from her southern side. She does talk about being from Texas in one song on this album. Uh, that song is called A Whole Lot of Woman, <laughs> and um, the, it's a, it's an interesting song. It might uh, It's not my favorite on the album, but it's definitely got... Um, it's got a kick-ass attitude to that song. So it could be one of those, you know, kind of going out songs, let's sing it at the top of our voices songs, one of those things, which are always good and, you know, nothing to sneeze at. So I, uh, I appreciate that there is the soulfulness. There's some of those nods to her Southern roots and um, that she really does manage to blend some of those elements here. So I'm curious what you all think. If you have heard this album, do you like it? Do you not like it? And why? Are you a Kelly Clarkson fan in the first place? Or did you tune in because this was a different approach for her that you wanted to hear the more soulfulness of this album? 
Or if you are Kelly Clarkson, was this a turnoff? Did you want more of what she's done in the past and were disappointed in this album? I would love to hear from you, hear your thoughts on not just the album as a whole, but what are your favorite songs from the album? What are your least favorite songs from the album? I would love to hear those thoughts and what you think of this new album, Kelly Clarkson's The Meaning of Life. In the meantime, we are going to take our first break of the podcast, but stay tuned and we'll be right back with more of the GSMC Music Podcast. So speaking of soulful, in, at least in terms of music, we were, uh, what about the bedroom. Are you looking to spice things up in the bedroom? That can be a soulful experience, right? Have you been fantasizing about surprising your lover with an adventurous new toy or adult movie? Well, I have an offer for you that you're not going to be able to resist. And that offer is to go to adamandeve.com where for a limited time, you will get 50% off of just about any item. 50% off just about any item. And that's not all. When you select your one item at 50% off, you'll also receive three free adult DVDs. You know, just for a little inspiration if you're looking for that. Plus a free extra gift that is so sensual, I can't even mention it on this podcast. But to top it all off, not only that, they will even throw in free shipping on your entire order. No, they are not kidding. Check out adamandeve.com today for this special offer. You'll get 50% off of one item when you type in the offer code GSMC, just like the podcast, GSMC Music Podcast. That promo code is GSMC. When you do that, you'll get that 50% off. You'll get the three free DVDs, a free extra gift, and free shipping. Just use offer code GSMC at adamandeve.com. That's GSMC, just like the podcast, at adamandeve.com. Welcome back to the GSMC Music Podcast. Before the break, I was talking about Kelly Clarkson's new album, The Meaning of Life. Again, I really liked it, in case you didn't get that from the segment. Um, you know, I, I can be really subtle sometimes when I talk about things. <laughs> no, I really liked it. Um, and now let's look at a little bit of music news going on in the world. One of the headlines that I keep seeing popping up uh, regards artist Lana Del Rey. And she has a song that she is actually going to be retiring, taking off of her live shows. She's touring again in 2018. And there's one song that she, um, she says she no longer feels comfortable in performing and that is the song Cola. She said, this is a quote from her, when I wrote that song, I suppose I had a Harvey Weinstein slash Harry Winston type of character in mind. I envisioned like a benevolent diamond bestowing upon Starlet's individual, like a Citizen Kane or something. I'm not really sure. I thought it was funny at the time, and I obviously find it really sad now. I support the women who have come forward. I think they're really brave for doing that. So given this current climate with um, all of the allegations that are going on, she just doesn't feel that Cola is a fit for her performances at the moment. And she says that she is not comfortable singing it live. So she says that um, the only right thing to do would be to retire it. So if you're a Lana Del Rey fan, what do you think of this news? Do you agree with her? Do you appreciate that she is taking a stand, that she is... Um, supporting those who have come forward with allegations, et cetera. What are, what are your takes? I always appreciate um, for myself when women support other women. I can't, I can't be angry about that. So I appreciate her take on that. Whether you agree or not, I do appreciate that she is standing up and um, stating what she feels and what she believes. What else is going on in the world of music? Apparently there has been a bit of a hullabaloo. Does anyone use that word anymore? Well, I'm using it here. Well, let's bring it back. A hullabaloo. <laughs> there have been uh, apparently some conspiracy, conspiracy theories revolving around artists Nicki Minaj and Cardi B, who actually linked up for their first collaboration last week. So the rumors are that 
Um, they neither knew the other was going to be on the song and they're both angry about it. And so there have been all of these things that all of these rumors circulating and, um, some people even suggesting that they have been taking shots at each other or sniping at each other about their respective verses. And so Nicki Minaj actually, uh, hopped on social media the other night and, um, on Tuesday night, uh, Halloween, and she got on Twitter and just to set the record straight. And she says that she knew that this was going to happen. He, she said um, she was called and asked if she thought they should put Barty on it. And that's, I don't know if that's a typo. Um, and I said, okay, let's do it. The end. So she says the comp conspiracy theories are just so tired. Relax, breathe. So that is her take on it. And she went to clarify that um, any written, she has to give written approval before any song gets sent to streaming services. So with that in mind, she would have known, they both would have known that the other had been on it and they would have both heard the track and spoken up if they'd had a problem with it. So the it, of course, in question being this supposed uh, gripe, grievance between Nikki and Cardi, which people have been talking about apparently. And so she's just trying to say she's, she, in fact, she, she capped off her series of tweets by reiterating Cardi's thoughts on the issue from a recent interview, which were, we could make it, we could make out and it wouldn't be enough. I'm done. So, um, conspiracy theories, y'all, they're everywhere and people like to bring them up about everything. Sometimes they have a foot in fact, sometimes they don't who knows about this one, but both artists are clearly stating, no, this is not what you are making it out to be. No, there is not an issue. No, there is not a problem. So social media, it's the best way to get things out there these days. That's what they're saying. Um, what do you think? Do you agree? Disagree? I tend to take people at their words, but that's just me. So, um, you may have a different take on that. What do you think about this situation? Also in news, let's talk about which artists have announced new tours coming up. There's always tours being announced. Um, as of yesterday, uh, Rod Stewart has announced a Canadian tour. If you are a Rod Stewart fan and you either live in Canada or live close to Canada, that will be launching in early 2018. It's a 10 city tour, which kicks off in March uh, in Toronto and then continues into April. Swedish metal troops, Sabaton, will be joining forces with German Thrasher's creator for an early 2018 tour across North America. Uh, that is a 14 day excursion starting in February in Phoenix. Uh, it will go to cities like Los Angeles, Seattle, Chicago, Philadelphia, and Atlanta. And then there are Canadian shows planned for Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, Toronto, and Montreal. So they are, um, supporting their Sabaton is supporting their eighth album last stand. Also announced yesterday, Dan Auerbach has announced his Easy Eye Sound Review Tour, which will be going on in also 2018, starting in February. February 10th in Vancouver and extending into April. He'll be hitting um, places like Seattle, Los Angeles, Dallas, Philadelphia, Brooklyn, Toronto, and Chicago. Um, if you're a country music fan, Blake Shelton on Monday announced a new tour, the Country Music Freaks Tour, and that will be, again, amazingly enough, early 2018. Um, starting in February, starting on February 15th in Tulsa, and then uh, hitting a total of 14 cities across America. So look out for those dates. Thomas Rhett has announced his Life Changes Tour. Uh, so another country music tour, if you are a fan of that. And this is a 28 date, 28 date trek um, that is starting in April on April 5th. So keep an eye out for that. What else is going on in terms of touring? Kelsey Ballerini announces unapologetically tour, and that will be in, um, touring across America in 2018 to support her upcoming album, unapologetically. Uh, that will be something to keep an eye out for. Maroon 5 on October 26th announced Red Pill Blues Tour. And so later in 2018, Maroon 5 will be going on a North American tour supporting that next album, Red Pill Blues. Uh, it's a 33 date outing. So that's kicking off on 
in May, in May, the end of May, May 30th. It's a little later than some of the other ones that have been announced and will be continuing through the entire summer and into October. So something else, if you are a Maroon 5, keep an eye out for that. Uh, more country, Luke Bryan announces What Makes You Country Tour. That will be um, starting in, well, 2018, of course, but Oh, February. There we go. February 16th. Just trying to double check that date. And then Franz Ferdinand announced uh, their North American tour, which will be in. And again, those are um, they're Scottish in case you are unfamiliar with them, um, kicking off April 8th. And finally, also announced in the last week, Demi Lovato has announced a North American tour and that will be she'll have special guest dj khaled and that is the 20 it's a 26 date tour kicking off february 26th in san diego running through march she'll be hitting places like uh, las vegas dallas detroit brooklyn philadelphia washington dc and miami there are canadian stops for you canadian listeners planned for montreal and toronto so if any of those sound interesting to you and you want to get in on the action you should go take a look and see about those tours and those dates and maybe get yourself some tickets what else who else are you looking forward that is forward to touring in 2018 i like to hear from you so what do you you know what do you know about what's going on in terms of tour dates what's going on in the world that you want to know about musically what are your new favorite albums what are your new favorite artists just as important what are your old favorite albums and your old favorite artists what are those go-to albums that you can listen to over and over and over again even though you've heard them already a million times over i would love to hear your thoughts on those and uh, as I said last week, you can find us on social media. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr, GSMC Music. And we would love to hear from you. I would love to hear from you. Occasionally, I will be putting up polls on Twitter. So come and vote on those polls and tell me what you think. I uh, also will sometimes just put up questions and I would love to hear your answers for those questions. So follow us on Twitter. Twitter especially, that's where we seem to be most active, although we are on the other social media sites, as I mentioned. Facebook especially is probably the second most active. Come check us out on social media. We would love to hear from you. Who are your favorite artists? What would you like to hear reviewed? Um, what are you curious about in terms of the music world? Let me know and I'll see what I can do, okay? Now it is time to take that second break of the podcast. So stay tuned and we'll be right back with the GSMC Music Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the final segment of the GSMC Music Podcast. We are talking about a variety of things to, on today's show. Started off talking about Kelly Clarkson's new album, The Meaning of Life. Moved into a little bit of music news and some upcoming tour dates. I asked you what you would like to hear about on the podcast, and I would love to hear from you on social media. So check us out, hit us up, whatever you want to say. I talked last week a little bit about my eclectic music upbringing and that my dad had pretty much every iteration of music players <laughs> as they had come out from a reel to reel to the eight tracks to vinyl to record player finally cd player i'm not record player cassette player 
finally CD player. We had uh, an old van growing up. In one van, my dad actually built the back seat in the back. I'm sure, you know, it wouldn't have passed safety standards of today, but hey, this was the 70s and we had a slightly different view on the world then. And so he actually built the back seat in that van. And then the next van that we had, he sort of built this crazy system to have a cassette player in there. There wasn't a built-in radio in the dash, but he rigged up this system that he could put a, a cassette player that he bolted somehow to the top of the roof inside the car. And I mean, my dad's just awesome in a lot of ways. He might sound a little weird in the way I'm describing him right now, but no, he's not. He's awesome. So at any rate, I grew up listening to a lot of music and sometimes people will say to me, oh, you're too young to know about that. And while it's true that I was too young to grow up with that music, I, um, can, uh, you know, I still love it after the fact and for various reasons, namely uh, a lot of times my dad, my dad loves Elvis. So I grew up listening to a lot of Elvis. I grew up listening to, um, Buddy Holly. I grew up listening to the, the American graffiti soundtrack. I definitely have a soft place in my heart for 50s and 60s music and some of those songs and those groups and those artists I just love and still to this day know all of the words and love to sing along with them it makes me think about my dad and road trips and singing with him in the car one of the groups that I love even though I'm quote unquote too young to know about them are is the Beatles and I can't say that I got this love from my dad because he he likes the Beatles, but he's not um, like a major crazy Beatles fan. But I uh, I remember when I was in first grade and I went for a sleepover at a friend's house and her mom had the Beatles on vinyl. And I remember listening to it and just thinking they were the coolest thing ever. It was one of their earlier albums that had um, a hard day's night on it, had eight days a week on it. And I just thought that was the coolest. And I remember my friend and I in our little flannel nightgowns in the middle of nowhere, Montana, dancing around to the Beatles. And that began my love affair with the Beatles. And it has continued throughout my life. When I was older, the, um, I can't remember if I was still in high school or if I was just out of high school when the anthology came out. The anthology, which was, you know, the whole documentary, but then also the re-release of a lot of the music and some of the, some of the, um, the remakes of the, or the other takes of the music and some of the never before, before heard or rarely heard clips from that music. And that just deepened my love affair with the Beatles. Um, must've been when I was, yeah, it was right around high school because I do remember watching it with my parents and listening to my parents reminisce about when the Beatles became popular and what people said about them and what they remember. You know, people were so shocked by the fact that their hair was so long because it brushed their collars when they first started singing and just things like that. And then I went to college and I met what would be my best friend in the entire world. I didn't know that at the time. We met through a mutual friend and we were having an evening in her dorm room. The mutual friend happened to be an RA, a resident assistant. So she was on call that night and couldn't leave. So this new friend and I went out for snacks. We went to the local grocery store and got snacks and in the car, randomly happened a Beatles song came on the radio station and we both got excited and we both started singing and it turns out that we were both huge huge Beatles fans so between that and eggnog which is a completely different story but from the same night it happened at the grocery store an eggnog story maybe I'll tell you one day our, our friendship was cemented the Beatles and eggnog, we always say, cemented our friendship and we have been friends for 20 years now, all because of a love for a group that isn't around anymore. Um, unfortunately, two of the four members are dead. And, you know, some people today might not even, they might have a vague idea of who they are, but they might not know that much about them. And that's okay. That happens with artists as time goes on. Uh, groups that are hugely, hugely popular in one era are not popular, of course, in the next era. So I just bring that up because music brings up 
nostalgia for us. It can bring up memories for us. It brings up all of these emotions. No matter what emotion you are feeling, there is a song or an artist or an album that's going to match that emotion. Think of those songs that you love to sing in the car, you know, at the top of your lungs when you're just belting it out and so happy, you don't care who can see you. Think of those songs that you play when you are really sad or things just aren't going right and somehow those songs either help you feel better or they help you wallow in that sadness for a while until you're ready to get back up and get back out there. I have both of those categories in my life and I like to sing along to both of those categories. It's just a different kind of singing. So for music for me is emotional. It is nostalgic. It reminds me of certain places, certain times, certain people. And I that's the perspective that I bring to this podcast. So I just wanted to share that with you. I'm not always going to give you the most technical or, um, well, the most technical of reviews on albums, but I will give you honest takes on what I think and how it makes me feel and all of those sorts of things. So having said that, we are going to wrap up this podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you will join me again next time. Uh, it's always, you can find all of our podcasts uh, at www.gsmcpodcast.com. You can download those podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, any app that you use for any mobile device. And as I mentioned already, find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. We would love to hear from you. Please join me next time and thank you for listening. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.